Broadcasting more than 2,000 games live and archived in 15 sports in over 10 counties in western Pennsylvania. As well as being the exclusive home for all the WPIAL playoffs and championships for nearly two decades. Anytime, anywhere, always there. We are the new Trib Live High School Sports Network. Welcome to coverage of WPIAL Basketball 2017 2018 here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. High School Basketball at tribhssn.triblive.com is sponsored by UPMC Sports Medicine by AstroTurf, by Carlo University, proud sponsor of the 2018 WPIAL Girls Basketball Playoffs, and by Trib Total Media. And welcome inside, continuing coverage of the 2017-2018 WPIAL Boys Basketball Season here on the Trib Live Sports Network. I'm Sean Saputo, I'm joined alongside Steve Nagler in a battle of cats in Class 4A, Section 3. It's the Bell Vernon Leopards, first overall in the conference with a 5-1 record and a 9-3 overall record, being, traveling to South Fayette to take on the South Fayette Lions, 4-2 in the conference, 7-5 overall. Yeah, good to be here alongside you, Sean. A couple of uh, pretty good teams here in Class 4A. Bell Vernon, as you mentioned, uh, atop of Section 3. They are hot as of late. Kind of an uneven start for the Leopards. They started 4-3. and three. That 4-3 and three record early did include a win in their first section game over South Fayette at home. Very close, low-scoring affair, 35-33. But of late, they have been on fire. They have won their last five games four of, uh, three of which have been in section. South Fayette, a little bit of a different story. They are four and two overall, seven and five overall, and uh, four and two in uh, section three, I should say. Uh, they are coming off a 50 to 47 loss earlier in the week at the hands of Uniontown, and they hope to get back on the uh, right side of the win column with a win here tonight. Bell Vernon has outscored their opponents Pretty handily so far on the year. 67 points per game, nearly 56 points again. South Fed a little bit closer margin. They have outscored their opponents 53 to 50 on average. Mentioned these two teams already facing off earlier in the year. They split their games last year in 2016-2017. South Fed won back on the 20th of December 2016 by the score of 56 to 49 and Bell Vernon was able to even out the season series with a 66-60 win almost a year ago, uh, the 20th of January in 2017. I'm sure that Dave Mislin, hoping that uh, he's able to do the same thing by uh, winning here tonight to kind of even that season series and bring his team within uh, a half game, or actually into a, a virtual tie at the top with Bell Vernon. And just to show how close these two teams are, as you mentioned, the scores from last year, uh, these two teams have met. This will just be the fourth time in recent memory as South Fayette was down in the AA ranks, Bell Vernon in the AAA ranks. And with the reclassifications, these two teams now meeting in Class 4A, uh, every game has come to a decision by seven points or fewer, and the home team has won every matchup between these two squads. So if push comes to shove and uh, the future holds any ground to the past. And South Fayette could be in for a victory tonight, but these two teams, Steve, if you take a look at the past history between the two, uh, for South Fayette riding a playoff streak uh, dating back to 2006, it includes a PIAA championship in 2010, a uh, PIAA semifinal chance in 2011 and a WPIAL runner-up multiple uh, quarterfinal rounds for South Fayette, uh, including a section title back in 2015. For Bell Vernon, 
was section champions last year. However, before that, had not been to the playoffs since 2010 or had won a section championship since 2008. And really a, a growth for the Bell Vernon Leopards basketball program. If you go back to 2011, 2012, and 2013, this is a team that won seven games and now in the midst of potentially a back-to-back -back section champion. Yeah, this uh, Kyle D. D. Gregorio, the head coach of the Bell Vernon Leopards, has done a really good job of turning this, uh, this team around. It uh, was not a successful basketball program for a very long time, as you documented, but he's got this team playing really good. He's got uh, seniors that um, are kind of all through this starting lineup. Uh, as a matter of fact, Kyle DiGregorio starts five seniors. We'll get into the starting lineups in just a second. So he's got a lot of experience, a lot of talent, and even guys like Logan Frogner, who will not start here tonight, an outstanding uh, six-man off the bench, really good football player. Got a chance to see him against West Mifflin in the football season, outstanding receiver and uh, kind of return man. So uh, it'll be fun to watch this Bell Vernon Leopards team, and uh, it, it's nice to see how Coach D. Gregorio has really turned this program around. And when we get to the starting lineups, let's talk South Fayette right now. They'll start five seniors, but the usual starters collectively combining on the season to average over 40 points, nearly the entire point uh, per game average for South Fayette. And it includes one senior that is going to start today. We'll mention this name, a young man you've seen on the football field as well, who you said has amazing potential, Noah Plack. Yeah, Noah Plack, uh, just an outstanding athlete, probably goes 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 uh, averaging about 10 points per game so far on the year. Because he is a senior, and it is senior night, he will start with the other four seniors uh, in Dave Mislin's lineup, but he's a guy that is normally in the start starting lineup anyway. Uh, Connor Mislin is the leading scorer for the South Fayette Lions, uh, averaging 15 points per game, just a sophomore. Uh, he will be very quick to get off the bench uh, after Coach Mislin starts his five seniors here tonight. And real quick, let's take a look at the schedule tonight in WPIAL Class 4A. Did I get that out on me? In Section 3 tonight, Elizabeth Forward is at Waynesburg Central. Keystone Oaks visits McGuffey, and Uniontown takes the hike to South Park. Also in Class 4A, Beaver Area versus Quaker Valley. Beaver Falls at Blackhawk. Hopewell at Ambridge. Newcastle at Central Valley. And in Section 1, Deer Lakes, Indiana. Derry at Yawk Valley at Freeport. Take a look at the Section 3 Class 4A standings real quick. Bell Vernon first place, 5-1, and 9-3 and three overall. A uh, two-way tie for second between South Fayette and South Park, both sitting at 4-2, and 7-5 and five for South Fayette and 6-5 and five for South Park. Uniontown comes in in fourth place, 3-2 three with a 7-5 and five overall mark. Fifth place, McGuffey, 3-3 three and three with a 10-4 and four overall mark. Almost tied for the best record, most wins in the section, but still sitting in fourth. Keystone Oaks is three and four and six and eight overall. Elizabeth Forward two and five, three and eight, or excuse me, six and eight overall as well. And Waynesburg Central, zero oh and five and three and nine overall. We'll take a break. When we come back, starting lineups. You are watching exclusive coverage of the 2017 WPIAL Boys Basketball season here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Check out the new and improved Trib Live High School Sports Network website every day. Log on to tribhssn.triblive.com for all the schedules, the scores, the standings, great articles, and features from around the WPIAL. And of course, live and archived broadcasts. If you are a high school sports fan, the only website you will need is the new Trib Live High School Sports Network at tribhssn.triblive.com. For a weekly... The team at UPMC Sports Medicine doesn't just rebuild wrists and knees. They build better athletes. Athletes at every level who want to get stronger and faster and prevent injuries. Fact is, no other sports medicine program in the region is more experienced when it comes to treating, training, and inspiring athletes. UPMC, the official health care provider of the Penguins, Steelers, and you. Find out more at upmcsportsmedicine.com. Check out the new... People ask what drives me. 
It's people ask what drives me. It's the respect I have for my opponents, the trust I have in my teammates, a coach who treats me with dignity, and a university that has faith in me on and off the field. That's what keeps me focused, why I practice harder, play my heart out. I play to win. I play for Carlo. Tell us your story using hashtag what drives you. Carlo University is a proud sponsor of the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Inside the AstroTurf, a pioneer in sports surfacing, proudly supports high school athletics. Visit one of their 280 fields in the tri-state area to see their cutting-edge technology. AstroTurf's focus on R&D enables them to provide innovative surfaces that protect athletes and stand the test of time. AstroTurf now propels performance with iconic turf fields and legendary record tan tracks. They manufacture, build, and maintain a full range of turf and track systems for total quality control. Learn more at AstroTurf.com. Check out the new Trib Live High School Sports Network on social media this season. For breaking news, scores, pictures, videos, links to our articles, and more, follow us on Twitter and Instagram under the handle TribLiveHSSN. Get in the conversation on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TribLiveHSSN. And on our YouTube channel, you can find thousands of interviews with local student-athletes and coaches, plus highlights and full games. The spot for Western Pennsylvania High School Sports on social media this season is the new Trib Live High School Sports Network. And back at South Fayette High School, the National Anthem has just concluded, done by the South Fayette Band. And we get ready for the starting lineups for tonight's contest, and I'll send it to the way of my broadcast partner, Steve Nagler. Yeah, both teams starting five seniors. The Road, Belvern, and Leopards will start Griffin Lacard, a six-foot senior guard. Jared Hartman also getting a start. He's also a six-foot six senior three, guard. Derek Thomas on the front line. He is a six-foot, three-inch forward. Christian Murphy in the backcourt. He is six-foot, one inches tall. Six and Bryce three, Washington, senior. six feet Derek tall, Thomas. also a guard. The South Fayette Lions head coach Dave Mislin's starting lineup looks like this. Drew Saxon, Saxton, a uh, senior guard. Tim Loker, a senior forward. Loker averaging eight points per game. Johnny Beck. A senior guard gets the start here tonight. Noah Plack averaging 10 points per game, a senior forward. And Austin Smith is the center for this South Fayette Lions team, also a senior. The three uh, officials here tonight, Sean Cannon, John Gallagher, and Gary Zangaro. For South Fayette, we mentioned in the beginning, uh, expect to see Braden Moy, Connor Mislin, and Drew Franklin as well. And for Bell Vernon, uh, off the bench, you will see Jake Rathway, Logan Frogner, guard, Cam Nusser, senior, Thomas Hebel, three, and Drew Joe Sattler. I was talking to Kyle DiGregorio today, and it was interesting because he said, I don't, you know, I was calling him just to kind of get a clarification on some of this roster. And he said, you know, we play 10 guys. And he said, as of today, when we talked, it was about midday. So I don't know who's starting. He said, I got to go through my rotations. He said, all 10 guys end up playing. And they all play, play about the same amount. So it's really interesting. He's got, uh, you know, most, most coaches will go with a standard starting lineup. that maybe varies uh, a little bit. Uh, it's pretty much all over the board for Di Gregorio. It's nice to have 10 players that you can kind of intermittently play and, and uh, have a lot of confidence in. Well, I was going to no, say, and I was going to bring that up to you, if you, you talk about uh, the 10 guys that rotate in and the athleticism of the team, you must have a really uh, stout overall team if one of your best athletes in the school, Logan Frogner, is yeah. one coming off the bench. Yeah, that's right. And... Uh, uh, he'll, he'll probably be one of the first to come off the bench. He's really exciting to watch. Uh, long and lanky, but uh, extremely athletic. Can get off the, off the hardwood and really, uh, really leap. So it'll be fun to see these two teams squaring off. Video broadcast tonight. Uh, thank you to Jess Levo for running the video for us here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. These two teams at the end of the football season were ranked number one and two in the WPIAL in Class 4A, and right now in Class 4A Section 3, they're one and two, just opposite ways this time with Bell Vernon at one, South Fayette at two. South Fayette was number one at the end of the WPIAL Class 4A football season. Bell Vernon was number two when it went to the playoffs. And now we get ready for number one and number two in, in Section 3, Class 4A, to jump. 
for South Fayette. Noah Plack against Derek Thomas. And we have a missed jump. And we redo it here, and Plack wins the tip. South Fayette takes it to the high right wing with Luker. Over to the left wing side now. Dribbling around back and forth is Johnny. Back back to Luker. Luker drives. Stops at the top of the key. Pulls out. Kicks it to the right corner. Inside to Plack. Going up strong. Dishes down low. Hook shot no good. Attempt by Smith. Rebounded by Rebound Bell Christian Vernon's Murphy. Christian Murphy. It'll be Jared Hartman bringing the ball across to the right wing now. Driving is Washington. Triple drive kick out to McCart. Back inside, driving and kicking down on the play is Bryce Washington. Well, I hope he's okay. He looks like he's in some distress. He just kind of collapsed over there. I don't know if it was a knee. Looks like he's maybe holding his left leg. Reaching down for the ankle. He drove inside to kick it out to the left corner. And driving in the lane was Jared Hartman when the dish went back inside and was looking for Washington on the left wing corner. And he is up and looks like he's got a little limp going. Yeah, it looks, it looks like he's going to be okay. He was really down and looked like he was in some pain. So Logan Frogner will be in for him. He came in and checked in with us. He, he's got to understand he's got to go down the down the way a little bit. South Fayette takes over on the turnover. It's Loker as Washington heads right back to the scores table. Loker back to the left corner. Driving kick to the right wing, Plack. Plack pulls up, drives right lane, spin move to the left lane, layup no good, rebound inside, and put back in by Austin Smith, his first two of the night. It's 2-0 South Fayette with seven minutes left first quarter. Hartman. Off to Frogner on the right wing. Hands off to LeCart. Clark goes high right wing to set up the offense. Drives left lane, kicking to the left wing. And off the hand of Johnny Beck, last touched out of bounds. And Washington checks right back in for Frogner. It's good to see him back in that basketball game. Didn't really seem to need a whole lot of attention after coming off with that left ankle injury. Driving as Hartman kicks it to the left corner. LeCart back to the top of the key. And slowly moving it is Derek Thomas. Thomas spin move, middle of the lane. Goes with a left hand layup, no good. Went for his own rebound and off Thomas and out of bounds. And it will go to South Fayette who leads 2-0 with 6.33 left first quarter. Boy, Thomas did everything but finish that time. Good use of the dribble and body control through the lane. Just couldn't get it up past the uh, bottom of the rim. Slight press by Bell Vernon. As Loker brings it ahead, Loker drives, dishes to the left wing. Dribble drive down the right lane as Johnny Beck layup, no good. Rebounded inside by Thomas, and Thomas begins the fast Thomas. break. Thomas goes behind the back on the dribble, sends it to the top of the key, Murphy. Now driving left baseline, stripped of the basketball was Hartman, but a foul is called underneath the basket. The 6.08 left in the first. That was a really late call. I thought that it was going to be a turnover. Oh, turns over, it's gonna, it turns out it's going to be a foul on Noah Plack. His first, team's first, 2 nothing. South Fayette. 6.08 left, first quarter. Inbound goes to Jared Hartman. On the high left wing. Now on the left corner, back to the left wing, Hartman. Motions the offense. Drives towards the right wing. Dribbles back around towards the top of the key. Looks for Washington on the left wing. Washington double teamed. Back for a three-pointer from the left corner. That one got tipped by Plack, oh, and it's rebounded. Long. Brought ahead by Loker. Loker drives, drops it back to the right wing. It's Saxton. Hands it off to Plack. Plack pulls up at the top. Looking to drive right side, dishes it out. Right wing three for South Fayette. That one off front of the rim, no good. Plack pushes it ahead, but it's rebounded by Murphy. With Hartman. Back to Thomas. Thomas drives left baseline, and we're going to get a foul on the body heading towards the hoop. It'll be the second team foul on South Fayette, and it will be officially uh, Austin Smith, his first. I think Joe Sablak and Nusser. Cam Nusser check in for the Leopards. Oh, you mentioned the low scoring game the first time, a 35 33 victory by Bell Vernon. We're off to that same type of pace. Only two points scored here in the first two minutes, 45 seconds. 
2-0 South Bay at 5-10 left first quarter. Motion around the arc for Bell Vernon. It's on the left wing, Hartman. Back around, LeCart on the right wing. LeCart pulls back. No shot clock in high school basketball. LeCart drives, floater from eight feet. Gets it off the glass and in. Two points for Griffin LeCart. And he heads to the charity stripe for a chance at three. Now uh, Logan, uh, Griffin LeCart, I should say, just going one on one with Johnny Beck. Good crossover move. And he was able to draw the foul on Johnny Beck. That's their foul, his two, first no third personal five. on the lion. And LeCart goes Beck. to the line to give his team their first his lead first. of the night. Jake Rathway checks in for Bell Vernon. As Frogner will prepare to do so after the foul shot. Free throw is up and good. Three to two the score. Bell Vernon leads 455 left first quarter. As Frogner checks in for Griffin LeCart. Drew for South to inbound. Misslin has the ball. Misslin will bring it ahead. Also in is Drew Franklin. And it's Misslin at the top of the half court circle. Driving kick, Franklin. Franklin around the arc. Hands it off to Plack. Plack on the high left wing. Pulls back, gets a pick. Top of the key, left wing. Dribble drive, looking to go down low and a pass intercepted. It was Loker and then he gets a steal of his own. Loker spin moves, looking to dish it back to the right wing behind the arc, and out of bounds off South Fayette with 4.16 left in the first, 3-2. Bell Vernon leads. Yeah, Lo Loker was claiming that that ball was tipped. I think he's right from my vantage point. It looked like the ball did go off of Bell Vernon Leopard, but still the same. It'll be the first turnover on the Lions. Frogner with the ball on the right wing. Dribbles around, spin moves, loses. And now Washington has it. Washington drives right lane. Throws up a layup. That one no good. Rebounded by Loker. Loker to Mislin. As Mislin crosses the timeline with 3.55 left. Loses it. Double teamed. Gets it off to Coyne. Loker drives right lane. Kick out. Right corner. Three. And that's a hit for Drew Franklin. It's 5-3. South Fayette with 3.40 left in the first. Rathway. Hands it off to Nusser. Nusser gets past. Throws the layup on the right lane. No good. Rebounded inside by Frogner. And Frogner lays it in to tie this one back That's up at five. A good job by Frogner there. Franklin to Plack. Plack. Left hand layup is good. Transition offense by South Fayette at 7 5 as things start to pick up. Pathway. He looks to drive right side. Loses possession. Hands it off to Washington on the high right wing. Guarded by Franklin. Now a drive down the right baseline. Kick out right left corner three for Frogner. That one's good. Logan Frogner's got five. It's eight, seven Leopards. 250 left first quarter. Black. Franklin. This three is good. Franklin with six off the bench. And it's 10-8 Lions with 2.40 left first quarter. Yeah, Franklin normally a starter averaging eight points per game, but this time coming off the bench because of senior night, he has really infused some, a lot of, and now a turnover as Frogner is uh, called for traveling. But the last couple times down, good looks by Drew Franklin from beyond the arc. Now a press for Bell Vernon. The ball will be brought ahead by Mislin. This one crosses the timeline with 224. Hands it off. Loker, lay up on the left side. Good. Loker gets his first two of the night. It's 12 8. South Fayette leading Bell Vernon with 210 left. Braden Hoy gets ready to check in for the Lions. Rathway has the ball. Dribbles, looks to kick it off to Sedlak. Stolen away by Plack. Plack drives right side. Euro step to the left hand, and it's good for Noah Plack. He's got four. 14 8. Transition offense now for Bell Vernon, but slow things up on the high right wing with Rathway. Driving is Thomas towards the right side, throws a right hand layup and gets his own offensive rebound. Looks to go up and under the basket, kicks it out for a left corner three, and it's hit by Cam Nusser. 
14-11, now a lob ahead looking for Loker. He picks it up out of the air and out of bounds off South Fayette. It's headed to Mel Vernon. He brings in three substitutions of its own in Lacard, Hartman, and Murphy. 132 left in the first. South Bay Athlete leads 14-11. That was a big three by Nusser as he shuts down a 7-0 run by the home team, the South Fayette Lions. It's Hartman who brings the ball ahead, gives it to Murphy. Back to Lacart. Motions around and Thomas resets on the high left wing with 115 left in the first quarter. Drives, kicks, LeCart, right wing three, off front iron, no good, rebounded inside by Mislin. Mislin drives ahead. Euro step inside, he swatted from behind. Thomas with the block with 104 left in the first. But South Fayette regains possession with a 14-11 lead. Lions looking to run at every, every instance. They've gotten some easy points on the fast break. Top of the key, dribbling around the arc is Coin. Coin stops his dribble and hands it off to Black. Black, top of the key, gets the ball poked away by Thomas and hands it off to Braden, Ho Braden Hoy. Hoy in the half-court circle, drives towards the right wing side. This is at the Mislin. Mislin pulls off, now on the left wing, Franklin. Franklin drives the middle, goes to the right hand on the layup, and it's good. He's got eight points in the first quarter. 16-11 Lions, 30 seconds left. Ricard can potentially hold for the last shot, but it doesn't look like he wants to as he drives to the right side. Pulls it back on the right wing. Now Hyde as Hartman with the half-court circle. Dribbling around, 12 seconds left. Hartman to Lucard on the right wing. Lucard drives, double teamed, pulls it back to Murphy. Murphy falls down but gets it to Hartman. Three seconds left, Thomas a three, high off the glass, no good, rebounded by Mislin. And that does it for the first quarter of play from South Fayette High School. The score, South Fayette 16, Bell Vernon 11. After one quarter of play, you are watching 2017 WPIAL basketball here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. For a weekly in-depth look at boys and girls high school basketball in the district, log on to the WPIAL Round Ball Report every Wednesday at 6 p.m. here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Join experts Chris Harlan, Sean Myers, and James Dotson for coaches' interviews and the latest hoop news around the WPIAL. Oh, and um, Don Rebel is back on the show as well. That's the WPIAL Round Ball Report, Wednesday at 6 p.m. here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Back inside South Fayette High School. The score after one at South Fayette 16 and Bell Vernon 11. I want to remind you that the 380 Discount Warehouse in Murraysville carries a full line of brand new furniture at discount pricing. Also 380 Discount 50, 50, 50, Warehouse yeah. carries, carries Ashley, Liberty, Vaughn Bassett and Best Home Furniture and many more. You can special order your furniture at discount pricing. While you're here, stop our, shop our many other departments, including tools, automotive, food, pet and wildlife, household goods, and cleaning supplies, lawn and garden, seasonal holiday decor. Visit, on, visit us on the web at shop380.com or on the road on Route 380 in Murraysville. Bill Vernon has possession of the basketball to start the second quarter, and it's Frogner running the point. Dribbles towards the right wing now. Guarded and now drives, looking the right baseline, hands it off. Rathway kicks it out. Washington on the left corner. Dribble drive back to Rathway in the left corner. Rathway drives, kicks to Washington in the right corner. Looks across the Frogner left corner. Pump fake, dribble drive behind the back pass. Stolen and Plack brings it ahead in transition. And gets bumped by Washington and a foul called on Bell Vernon. Just the first foul on Bell uh, Vernon. Three, three, Bryce and it's Washington. Bryce Vernon. Washington who does the damage. Yeah, Logan Frogner getting a little bit too cute on the low baseline. Instead of making the safe pass, he tries to go behind his back. And it's the fourth Leopard turnover of the first half. Misslin bringing the ball ahead. Dribbles towards the right side with Franklin now. Franklin drives, dishes, and we're going to get a foul called on Bell Vernon. Second team foul, and the foul is going to be 
on Bryce Washington again, his second in the matter of moments. I thought they were going to get Frogner. Unfortunately for Kyle DiGregorio, they got uh, Bryce Washington for his second. Black takes the ball in the backcourt, dribbles it ahead. Pulls up at the top of the key. Now a crossover dribble to the right hand. No good on the layup, and Sadalak comes with the bat. Basketball on the rebound. Rathway crosses the timeline. 6.50 left, second quarter. 16-11, South Fayette. Inside, Sadalak left-hand layup. No good, rebounded inside by Hoy. Hoy lobs it ahead. And now a left-hand layup. It's Ben Coyne, his first two of the night. It's 18-11, Lions. Cam Nusser on the right wing to Frogner with 6.25 left. Frogner drives right lane. Layup no good. Rebounded Sabalak. Back to the left wing for three. And Rathway hits his first three points of the night. It's 18-14. Lions with 6.10 left first half. Mislin on the high right wing. It's a screen. And we're going to get a foul called on Bell Vernon. Defensively on the foul, it's Cam Nusser. Third team foul for Bell Vernon as Loker checks in for South Fayette as foul well as LaCarte. Three three, three pointers for the Bell Vernon Leopards. They've actually kind of stayed in the game with those three three pointers. And now they're laying it in. Mislin, he misses the layup, and Samalak comes up with the ball. LaCarte drives. Right lane, and travel is called. Took two and a half steps and turns the ball over for the Leopards. 5.52 left, and we have a 30-second timeout called by De Gregorio with the score 18-14. South Fayette leading Bell Vernon with 5.52 left. Yeah, he's not happy with his team's performance right now. Wanting to get in the, in the ear of his five out on the court. It's been uh, kind of sparse offensively for Bell Vernon. They had an 8-7 lead back uh, about midway through the first quarter. Since then, they've been outscored 11-6, and actually 12-6, I should say. And so uh, he just wants to kind of reset things and just kind of make sure that they're not, uh, they're taking better care of the basketball. They have out, uh, turned the ball over five times already in the first 10 plus minutes here tonight. And South Fayette gets ready to inbound the basketball. Lee Plack doing the inbounding and now Bell Vernon in a, in a full court press. Man to man. Washington guarding Plack on the inbounds. And the inbound goes to Franklin. Franklin slowly bringing ahead, double team, gets a bounce pass off to Plack. He has to get across the timeline, does so at 545, left first half. Plack drives, right hand layup, off the glass, no good, rebounded inside by Rathway. Rathway floats it ahead to LeCart. LeCart drives, left lane, reverse layup is good and one. Griffin LeCart has five, he heads to the charity stripe for his second potential three point play of the night. Drives left lane, goes reverse, draws the contact. That was a nice play by LeCard. Only goes six feet tall, but was in amongst the trees, was able to somehow get the shot up into the hoop, and goes to the line for his second opportunity to get a conventional three-point play. Platt gets the foul, his second. Free throw's good, six points for LeCard. It's 18-17 with five and a half left in the second quarter. South Fayette still leads and a cheap foul on Bell Vernon, who's foul number one, I believe Rathway on the foul. Fourth team foul for Bell Vernon as Thomas checks back in. Hartman will do so as well. Jared Hartman. Inbound right in front of us here on the near sideline. Loker inbounds it to Mislin. Mislin doubled, half court. Hits it back to Loker. Loker, now Franklin. Franklin in the left corner. Back to Loker. Pulls up from three from the left wing. No good. Rebounded inside by Thomas. Bell Vernon with a chance to potentially take the lead. Murphy dribbles ahead. Off to LaCarte. LaCarte dishes inside to Sabalak. 
Sabalak, left hand hook shot off the glass and good. El Vernon regains the lead, 19-18 with five minutes left in the first half. Hoy runs the offense. Inside the half court circle, standing on the S. Franklin, left wing. Lobs it over to Misslin on the right side. Back to the left wing, Franklin who dribbles around the arc, pulls up top of the key, resets. Lost possession momentarily. Loker on the high left wing. Pulls up, drives, right side, contact. Hoy, pulls back, four and a half left, second quarter, 19-18. Hoy, left hand layup, drives That's the left lane and it's Braden good. Hoy. Braden Hoy's got two, it's 20 to 19 Lions. Jared Hartman brings it ahead for Mel Vernon. Hartman off to the right wing side. Driving inside Murphy, back to Thomas. Dribble drives, pulls up on the foul line, goes to the right block, layup off glass, no good, rebound to Loker. Loker pushes it ahead quickly in a hard lob pass intended for Austin. Smith goes out of bounds. And with four minutes left in the first half, trailing 20 to 19, Belvernon takes yeah, over. Yeah, only the second turnover by the Lions, but that's one when you have just regained the lead. That really stings. You figure that you want to kind of uh, continue to have the momentum to kind of extend that one point lead and you give it away. Hartman hands it off to Murphy, back to LeCart, drives right lane, layup tipped and blocked uh, by Smith. Mislin drives towards the left side, Franklin on the left corner, back to Mislin, wide open, left wing three, it's off front iron, no good, rebounded by Washington. Washington. Washington pulls it ahead, drives left lane, layup, no good, foul called though, it's going to go on Tim Loker, it'll be his first foul. And the fifth foul on South Fayette. Bryce Washington got bailed out there. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He literally went one on five against the South Fayette Lions defense. There was no other Belvern and Leopards with him. Probably would have been smart to kind of pull it out. But uh, again, got bailed out by the Loker foul. So Washington heads to the stripe for the first time tonight. And he hits his first free throw. One point for Bryce Washington as Johnny Beck checks back in for South Fayette. Washington has tied this one at 20 with 3.33 left first half. Second free throw is good. Bell Vernon regains the lead. Frogner checks in. And still man-to-man -man full court press for Bell Vernon. Leopard's on a 10-2 run here in the last two and a half minutes. Nearly stolen as Beck comes away with the basketball. Bounce pass to Hoy, Hoy loves it, stolen away by Frogner. Frogner one on two, he's collided with and Frogner will head to the charity stripe and that might be the second foul on Loker. And all of a sudden the Lions in a little bit of foul trouble. That will be Loker's second. He and Noah Plack both with two fouls apiece. Logan Frogner had five points in the first quarter. Heads to the stripe for the first time tonight. Takes a left and right hand dribble with a spin in the hands and misses on the front end. Franklin checks back in. And Loker has to come out. Washington checks out as well as Cam Musser checks in. 3.22 left in the second quarter, 21-20 Leopards. Frogner's second free throw. Back iron, no good, rebounded by the Lions. Go for two at the stripe for Frogner. It's Franklin crossing the timeline. Bounce pass to Mislin. Mislin spins around, pulls up top of the key, drives left lane, kick to the left corner, Hoy. Hoy pulls back at the top of the key. Inside is Beck. Beck drives, kicks left corner, Hoy. Around the arc again is Hoy. Crossover, gets past LeCarte. Back to the top, Franklin. Pulls up, guarded by Frogner. Looking to drive left lane, right lane. Pulls back again. Alfayette resets. Hands it off with Franklin. Franklin with a bounce pass to Beck. Beck drives right side. Right corner now, Hoy. Hoy can't get past LeCart. Loses the basketball. Steal by LeCart. LeCart drives. Goes inside. Left hand layup, no good, but a travel is called beforehand. That's the second time Griffin LeCart has tried that Euro step, that crossover and he has taken an extra half step. So a couple of turnovers, one for each team in the last 30 seconds. Really good defense 
by the Belvern and Leopards ended up in a turnover by the Lions. They've really turned it up a notch from a man-to-man -man defense standpoint. Mislin the back, back to right, corner three for Hoy, in and out, and it falls out. Re offensive rebound put back, no good by Smith. Thomas comes up with the basketball. 2.15 left, first half. Bell Vernon leads 21-20. Driving the hoop is Frogner, left hand on the right hand side of the basket. Frogner's got seven, and it's 23-20, Bell Vernon. Nislin, double team to half court, throws it. Smith comes up with it to Beck in the right wing. Back to Mislin, left wing, three, wide open. No good offside of the glass. Rebounded by Frogner, who drives ahead on Smith. Layup, no good. Foul on Smith. Frogner will head to the stripe for two. Now Austin Smith picks up his second personal foul. So you got Smith, Clack, and Loker with all with two personal fouls apiece. Frogner 0 for 2 from the stripe. Free throw is up and off front of the rim. Logan Frogner 0 for 3 from the charity stripe. As Plack and Loker check back in. Two players with two fouls on South Fayette. Yeah, they're gonna have to be really careful. And if you're Bell Vernon, you wanna be really aggressive on the offensive end going against those two young men and put them in a position to possibly pick up their third personal foul. Frogner, 23-20 lead. That one's good, hits his first free throw of the night, has eight points. And South Fayette trails 24-20 with 1.45 left in the second quarter. Loker drives, middle lane, left, right hand layup, no good, rebounded by Thomas. Thomas drives ahead, Nusser, Nusser poked away by Franklin, stepped out of bounds going for the steal, and it's Leopard basketball underneath the Lion basket. A great defensive play by Drew Franklin. Not only does he knock the ball out of the hands of Cam Nusser, he does it without committing a personal foul. Not an easy thing to do when you're defending a fast break like that. Well, past the Frogner at the top of the key. Back to Nusser on the right wing. Nusser with a crossover dribble, pulls up at the foul line, kicks it to Frogner on the left corner. Regrouping is Bell Vernon. Halfway drives, pulls up on the right block. He got Beck in the air, spun underneath to go up for the layup, and Rathway will go to the line with three points tonight. That's going to be Beck's second personal foul, so. Dave Mislin with four players with two fouls apiece with 1.16 to go in this first half. First free throw off back iron, no good for Rathway. Bell Vernon has now missed four of its last five free throw attempts. And Rathway has a chance for one more with a 24-20 lead. 1.16 left first half, free throw is good. Four points now for Rathway, 25 to 20 the score. Mislin and Loker will work to break the man-to-man -man press. Loker guarded by Frogner and intercepted. Nusser driving, Nusser takes it to the hoop. No good, may have got tipped by Loker. Mislin drives ahead, Mislin working past Thomas, looking to dish inside, gets it in somehow to Saxton, hook shot no good, rebounded by South Fayette, it's Mislin. Mislin pushes it over to the right wing. Franklin, top of the key to Loker, 40 seconds left. Trailing 25-20, South Fayette, we have a foul on the floor. Yeah, it's gonna be against Cam Nusser for reaching in as Loker had gotten past him and he's trying to slap the ball away. Anytime you do that, you're gonna get whistled. That's his second personal foul. Still a foul to give for the Leopards. Loker has it at the top of the key. Now to Saxton on the right wing. Saxton hands it off to Plack. Plack looks to drive, right side, layup. Tipped away, but fouled on the drive with 30 seconds left in the first half. And Plack will head to the stripe. First foul shots of the evening for the South Fayette Lions. I was just gonna mention that they have not been to the line as of yet, which is really rare this late in the first half. And usually not a good sign if you're Dave Mislin, you're going to ask your team why they're not aggressive enough to have gotten to the line until 30 seconds left in the first yeah, half. Five points first. now for Black as he hits the first. Boyd checks in. And Coyne will check in after the shots. Sloker checks back out. 25 21. 
South Fayette trailing Bell Vernon. With 30 seconds left, first half. Smart by Dave Mislin to get Loker out, and if Plack makes this free throw, he will get Plack out of the game as well. Makes the free throw, he does. Six points for Plack. This coin checks in for him with 30 seconds left. You don't want it. those two big boys, uh, very integral parts of your team, to pick up their third personal foul late in the first half. Slowly bringing the ball ahead is Rathway. High right wing with 19 seconds left. Now down to 15. Frogner, high left wing. Slowly moving the offense. Jab step across. Rathway drives inside. Dishes down low. Sabalak. He goes up, travels. With 2.4 seconds left, 25 22 the score. Plack and Loker will check in for South Fayette. Good defense in the low block for South Fayette caused Sabalek to delay in getting the ball to the hoop, and when he did, he took an extra half step. Gives it to Mislin. Mislin drives. Half quarter off the back of the iron. No good. And just like that, Mel Vernon comes back after a rough first quarter and regains the lead in the second quarter. The score, Mel Vernon 25, South Fayette 22 at the half. When we come back, first half stats and first half thoughts. You are watching 2017 WPIAL basketball here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. While the weather outside may be frightful, the winter high school sports is delightful. That's here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Log on to the Trib, hssn.triblive.com for weekly audio and video coverage of boys and girls high school basketball, WPIAL wrestling, and PIHL high school hockey. The warmth and the glow of the winter sports season may be heard daily on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. The team at UPMC Sports Medicine doesn't just rebuild wrists and knees. They build better athletes. Athletes at every level who want to get stronger and faster and prevent injuries. Fact is, no other sports medicine program in the region is more experienced when it comes to treating, training, and inspiring athletes. UPMC, the official health care provider of the Penguins, Steelers, and you. Find out more at upmcsportsmedicine.com. Check out the new and improved Trib Live High School Sports Network website every day. Log on to tribhssn.triblive.com for all the schedules, the scores, the standings, great articles, and features from around the WPIAL. And of course, live and archived broadcasts. If you are a high school sports fan, the only website you will need is the new Trib Live High School Sports Network at tribhssn.triblive.com. People ask what drives me. It's the respect I have for my opponents, the trust I have in my teammates, a coach who treats me with dignity, and a university that has faith in me on and off the field. That's what keeps me focused, why I practice harder, play my heart out. I play to win. I play for Carlo. Tell us your story using hashtag what drives you. Carlo University is a proud sponsor of the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Halftime at South Fayette High School as Bell Vernon leads 25 to 22 and South Fayette came out hot in the first quarter leading 16 to 10 but just six points in that second quarter by South Fayette. The Bell Vernon full court man to man press really uh, forced an issue on the lines. Yeah, they did. I, I noticed that uh, that second quarter they really did ratchet up the defense, that man to man defense, and it really kept South Fayette on the perimeter. And we talked about the fact that they didn't get to the they didn't get to the rim enough to even get to the line more than in one occasion. That was uh, with 30 seconds left in the first half. So. Good job by Kyle DiGregorio's team uh, of really defending on the man-to-man. -man. I thought in the first quarter, the Lions did a better job of kind of slashing, getting to the hoop. Noah Plack uh, doing that, Loker doing that a little bit, uh, but uh, much better defense in the second, second quarter by the Leopards, and that's why you saw the uh, first quarter uh, deficit be uh, kind of swung around because of, of that really solid defense. 
Now it's time for our UPMC Sports Medicine scoring recap, powering the Stay Strong and Play On program with the Trib Live High School Sports Network. For the Bell Vernon Leopards, they're led by Logan Frogner, who actually came off the bench tonight. Eight points for the Leopards leading the way. Six points for Griffin LeCarte. Four points for Jake Rathway. Three for Cam Nusser, Bryce Washington, and Joe Sabalek with two points apiece. Bell Vernon 11 points in the first quarter, 14 in the second quarter for their halftime total of 25 points. I'm sure Kyle DiGregorio talking about the first half turnovers. They turned it over seven times in the first 16 minutes, and they were 6 of 10 from the foul line. South Fayette led by Drew Franklin. Franklin coming off the bench tonight, had eight points all coming in the first quarter. A pair of threes and a two-pointer. He leads the way for the Lions. Noah Plack with six, and four players with two points apiece. Tim Loker, Austin Smith, and uh, Braden Hoy, and... Benjamin Coyne with a pair off the bench for Dave Mislin. South Fayette, 16 points in the first quarter, only six in that uh, second quarter for their halftime total of 22. They turned it over five times in the first half and only one player getting to the line. That was Noah Plack, who was two for two from the charity stripe. Foul trouble for both teams. There's a little bit to deal with. Nobody more than two fouls uh, individually, but Noah Plack, Tim Loker, Johnny Beck and Austin Smith all do have two fouls after the first 16 minutes. And the Belvern Leopards, a couple of uh, young men in moderate foul trouble as well. Cam Nusser and Bryce Washington with two fouls apiece. That is the scoring recap sponsored by the UPMC Sports Medicine. Powering the Stay Strong and Play On program at the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Steve, let's talk this second half now. If you're South Fayette after what was a dominant first quarter and a very low second quarter, what does South Fayette need to get back into to regain momentum, get yourself back towards the lead? Well, I think they just got to, they need to get back into their, their traditional offensive set. I think the second quarter was probably uh, a little bit um, disjointed only because of the foul trouble that they had at the end of the first quarter. Uh, Noah Plack, and Tim Loker both picked up their second personal fouls early on in that second quarter. And so they spent a lot of the second quarter sitting on the bench and kind of with the mindset of, hey, I can't be as aggressive as I normally can be because of these two personal fouls. Now that everything is kind of reset, they only still have those two fouls at the break. I think you can kind of come out if you're uh, those players and say I can be a little bit more aggressive uh, starting early on in the in the second half as long as they play smart on the defensive end and maybe don't reach keep their feet moving you know hopefully in, if for their sake they can kind of stay out of foul trouble for the rest of this basketball game I think they just need to kind of go back to what they were doing you know they will certainly go back to their starting five uh, their normal starting five in the second half I think we'll see more of Franklin uh, we'll see more of Loker and certainly Plack, uh, but um, you know, Connor Mislin's going to have to get off of the Schneid. He uh, did not start here tonight because it was senior night. He's a guy that normally chips in with 15 points on average for this South Bay Lions team. I thought Bell Vernon did a great job against him. Griffin LeCarte mainly was the guy who was uh, who drew the duty against Connor Mislin defensively, but the sophomore is going to have to kind of look for more opportunities offensively. If you're Bell Vernon. Yeah, Bell Vernon just has to kind of continue to play. You know, they have the benefit of having 10 interchangeable players that um, are used to getting a lot of minutes. What that does is it gives you a lot of options, and more importantly, it kind of allows you, allows those guys to rest. You know, they, they don't play the same amount of minutes in many cases as a lot of the starters around the WPIL. So those guys, there's 10 fresh bodies that Kyle DiGregorio has kind of intermittently working in and out of the lineup. So I just think that they need to continue to do what they're doing. If they play defense the way they played in the second quarter, it's going to be tough for South Fayette to come back. The score is 25-22 at the half. We'll send it to break. When we come back, we will have that second half for you. You're watching 2017 WPIAL Boys Basketball, and it's here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. 
Hi, this is Josh Roundtree with the new Trib Live High School Sports Network's PIHL Power Play Show. This winter, myself and the coach, Kevin Zlomanski, will bring you the most comprehensive coverage of high school hockey in Western PA. Hey, Kevin, any suggestions on how we can pull it off? We're not goons. We're not bullies. No matter what people say or do, we have to be ourselves. Um, okay. Well, word is that you've been letting success go to your head a bit. Okay, what I do is none of your business. Is that clear? This should be a fun season. It's the PIHL Power Play Show every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock on the new Trib Live High School Sports Network. AstroTurf, a pioneer in sports surfacing, proudly supports high school athletics. Visit one of their 280 fields in the tri-state area to see their cutting-edge technology. AstroTurf's focus on R&D enables them to provide innovative surfaces that protect athletes and stand the test of time. AstroTurf now propels performance with iconic turf fields and legendary Rekertan tracks. They manufacture, build, and maintain a full range of turf and track systems for total quality control. Learn more at AstroTurf.com. And back at South Van High School, we're just under a minute away from the second half of action with Bell Vernon leading South Fayette 25-22 at the half. And Steve, you have a message for us. Yeah, I want to remind everybody that 380 Discount Warehouse in Murraysville carries a full line of brand new furniture at discount pricing. 380 Discount Warehouse carries Ashley, Liberty, Vaughn, Bassett, and Best Home Furniture and many more. You can special order your furniture at discount pricing. While you're here, shop our many other departments including tools, automotive, food, pet and wildlife, household goods and cleaning supplies, lawn and garden, and seasonal holiday decor. Visit us on the web at shop380.com or on the road on 380 in Murraysville. Open Tuesday through Sunday, 9 to 5. Shop 380 Discount Warehouse and save big. Self fit will begin with the basketball, now going left to right. Bell Vernon will move right to left now. Eight minutes on the clock, third quarter's underway. And Bell Vernon back to that full court pressure. Hoy gets it to Franklin. Franklin dribbles ahead on the left wing. Drops it back off to Loker. Loker looks to drive right hand side. Spin move, right hand layup, no good. Rebounded by Franklin. Pulls up, dishes down low. Plack on the left hand side of the basket. Gets two points right away. He has eight on the night. And it's 25 24, and now a press of its own by South Fayette. Now Murphy, left wing, right wing three, no good, rebounded, rebounded by Mislin, and a foul is going to be called on Washington. That's and that's Washington's third foul. Yeah, that's a bad foul to give when you're that far away from the basket. Really just uh, not thinking was uh, Bryce Washington there. A six foot senior guard with three fouls. Boy brings the ball ahead. Pulls up at the top of the half court circle. Off to Mislin on the left wing. Mislin pulls up, hooks up the dribble, hands it off to Franklin on the right wing side. Drops back at the top of the key, motions around the arc, gets a screen from Plack. Right wing drive, kick out. Hoy drives, oh, that's right hand right layup is good for Hoy. He has Foy. Oh, Four. that was way too easy if you're Bell Vernon defensively, and now they turn it over. Mislin gets the steal, 26-25, South Fayette. Franklin to Loker, wide open, right hand lane, and the layup is good, and a 6-0 run to kick things off in the third quarter for South Fayette, now lead 28-25. Minute and a half gone, third quarter. Hartman off to Washington on the right wing side. Back to Thomas at the top of the key. Thomas looks to drive left lane. Gets fouled, layup, and one. Thomas goes up strong for his first two points of the night, and he's fouled inside by Brandon Hoy. It's his first. Well, Hoy really giving up a lot of size and mass that time. He found himself having been switched off on Thomas, and Thomas used that big body and that height advantage to get to the hoop with no problem. Thomas' free throw is good. Three points for Thomas. We're all knotted up at 28 with 6.20 left sec third quarter. Boy crosses the chair the timeline. It's 6.15. Hands it off to Mislin. Back to Hoy. Inside to Plack. On the left block. Spin move. Hook shot with the right hand. No good. Rebounded by Bell Vernon. And it's Hartman. Hartman double teamed by Plack and Hoy. Floats it ahead. Stolen. Intercepted by Loker, and Loker is fouled, and it's going to go on Washington, and that's Washington's fourth. 
And that's the downside of leaving the young man in the game after he picked up his third. Now he's going to have to sit down with four fouls very early on in the second half. Still almost six minutes to go in the third quarter. So Bill Vernon's rotation may take a hit with four fouls from Washington. A lot of time to go in this one. 5.50 left third quarter, tied up at 28. Franklin on the right wing. Top of the key, Loker around the arc, Plack. Now Hoy, right wing three. That one's short, rebounded by Mislin under the basket. Off the air ball, Mislin. Now Loker, right, left corner, three. three. Loker hits, he's got seven. It's 31-28 Lions. Hartman floats it ahead to Thomas on the right wing. Backs off. Hartman resets at the top of the key. With 5.15 left. LeCart drives right lane. Layup off the glass and off the front of the rim. No good. Rebounded by Loker. He gets it to Hoy. Hoy drives ahead. Drops it off. Flack. The cross. Mislin. Deep right wing. Three. And it hits. Mislin's first three points of the night. And it's 34-28 Lions. 4.50 left, pass intended, and out of bounds. Loker went diving for the steal, and Bell Vernon has to re take a, will regain possession. Loker slid right into Logan Frogner, who's in the chicken area. Good start of the second half for the South Fayette Lions. It's knocked down a couple of threes, one by Loker, one by Connor Mislin, and they have outscored the Belvern and Leopards by the score of 12 to three so far here in the first three plus minutes of the second half. South Fayette already outscoring itself in the first matchup at 33 the first time around, already 34 with 435 left third quarter. And the lead by six. Thomas, right wing, poked off the ball. Franklin gets the steal. Franklin's one on one with Thomas, goes. Great lay and layup and he's fouled by Thomas. Oh, nice defensive play. Out in the open, Thomas handles it pretty well for a big guy, but he's going against a very quick sophomore and Drew Franklin. And Franklin, quick hands, got was able to reach in, take it away from Thomas, and got down to the bucket where he was fouled by Thomas. Franklin's first trip to the line. Tied for the team lead with eight points and misses the front end of the two foul shots. 34-28 South Fayette leads, 40 428 left third quarter. Free throw is good. Nine points now for Franklin. That's a game high right now. 35-28. Touchdown lead for South Fayette. Motion around the arc. Thomas on the left wing side. Drives towards the right side. Kicks it to Frogner in the right corner. Drives right baseline. Knocked off the basketball. Out of bounds. And last touch by South Fayette. 4-10 left, Bill Vernon retains possession. South Fayette, doing a great job early in the 13-3 edge so far in the third quarter. Rathway, off to Nusser, Nusser, Thomas, back to Rathway to Frogner, left wing. Just motion around the arc for Bell Vernon. Now Rathway drives right side. Goes underneath, pulls up, picks up the dribble. Now the Thomas cutting on the left lane and he lays it in off the glass. Thomas has five. All in the third quarter, it's 35-30. Coin drives right side. He gets fouled by Thomas and one. Ben Coyne's got four and he has a chance for five points on the night as Thomas picks up his third. That's three quick ones for Derek Thomas. He had no fouls coming into the second half. Now he's got three. Three fouls all, you mentioned it, all in the second half. And now Bell Vernon has some foul problems with starters. As the free throw is up, and the free throw is good for Boyne. He has five, and it's a 38-30 Lions lead. Rathway moving slowly. Launches one to Sabalak. Kicks it back to Frogner on the far sideline. Back underneath to Sabalak. Stuck underneath the basket. He's tied up with the basketball by Coyne. And possession arrow stays with Bell Vernon. 
Boy checks in for the Lions in favor of Mislin. Mislin tonight, three points. Had a three earlier on in this third quarter. Inbound for Bell Vernon underneath the basket, far baseline. Goes to Thomas. Thomas dribbles around the arcs, regain, resets the offense with Frogner, guarded by Franklin. Frogner drives, dishes, far right wing three is short rebound by Nusser. And rebound by Hoy, and Hoy dribbles ahead. Hoy resets and loosens around the arc, and we're going to get a foul called on Nusser, and now Nusser has three. With 2.55 left in the third, score 38-30, and oh, timeout yeah, is going to be called good. by Bell Vernon. Team. We'll keep it here. Kyle DiGregorio not happy with Cam Nusser. First of all, on the offensive end, he took a, a three that was really deep, I think probably out of his range. And then on the defensive end, it's just a little ticky-tack foul so far away from the hoop. That's not what Kyle DiGregorio wants to see with his team already down eight points with just under three minutes to go in this third quarter. And Bell Vernon really got back into this game and regained the lead after it was a full court man-to-man -man press. And now we see South Fayette kind of giving Bell Vernon a taste of its own medicine, doing the same exact thing uh, the Leopards did to the Lions. Yeah, and it's affected the Leopards and their ability to kind of take care of the basketball. Already also 10 turnovers here in the game, three in the second half. So South Fett able to ratchet up their defense and it's created offensive opportunities for them. This is a 16-5 total South Fayette run in the Further third quarter alone as Bell Vernon only has one more foul to give the entire uh, second half. Inbound goes to Hoy. Hoy with the basketball. Crossover dribble. Penetrates towards the left wing side. Inside to Coin. Coin on the left side of the arc. Now it's Black. Black high right wing. Guarded by Thomas. Drives left lane. Dishes back to Hoy. Pulls back. Hoy at the top of the key. Guarded by Sabalak. Hands it off to Beck. Beck. Continuous crossover dribbles. Gets it back to Hoy. Hoy dribbling around halfway. Guarding. Halfway. Can't get him. Now an opportunity oh by Mislin is blocked by Sabalak. And now Bell Vernon pushes ahead. Halfway in the corner. Drives left baseline. Goes underneath and he throws it right to Black. Black drives. Dishes. Back to... Mislin, Mislin drops it off. Basket by and the basket Coyne. by Coyne. He's got seven. It's 40 to 30. Thomas hands it off to the right wing. Nusser. Nusser inside. Sabalak, right hand layup off the, from the right block is good. Sabalak has four. It's 40 to 32. South Fayette. Bell Vernon back to that full court press, easily broken. And now Mislin, a three from the right corner, no good. Rebounded by Beck. Back to Mislin. Mislin from 17, that one no good. Rebounded and saved, but Sabalak comes up with the basketball. Thomas pushes. Nusser drives. Right baseline, dishes it off. Thomas drives, and we have a blocking foul. Mislin going to go against Benjamin Coyne as he tried to stand in there and take the charge from Nusser, but they said he was late in getting the block. Now Nusser limps off. And some substitutions come in for Bell Vernon. With 117 left, third quarter, 40 to 32. Lions leading the Leopards. Inbound to Murphy on the left corner. Murphy pulls back. Murphy guarded tightly by Franklin, hands it off to LeCarte. Cart with a jab step, kicks it back. Thomas regroup at the right wing. Drives inside, spin on Plack. Plack stays with Thomas on the right block, floats one up, gets his own offensive rebound, kicks it out. LeCart with a left corner three. That one's airmail. Plack with the rebound, bounce pass to Franklin on the left wing. And resets with Plack. And a timeout is called by Thomas South Fayette. Fayette. With 45.4 seconds left in the third quarter, 
The score 40 uh, to 32. We'll take a break as well. It's South Bay at 40. It's Bell Vernon 32. You are watching 2017 WPIAL basketball here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. The team at UPMC Sports Medicine doesn't just rebuild wrists and knees. They build better athletes. Athletes at every level who want to get stronger and faster and prevent injuries. Fact is, no other sports medicine program in the region is more experienced when it comes to treating, training, and inspiring athletes. UPMC, the official health care provider of the Penguins, Steelers, and you. Find out more at upmcsportsmedicine.com. Back at South Fayette High School, the score 42-32. South Fayette leading Bell Vernon with 45 seconds left in the third quarter. I'm Sean Saputo, joined alongside by Steve Nagler, Jess Levo, running the video equipment for us here tonight as things have really turned the way of the Lions so far early uh, first half, or second half, excuse me. Yeah, they really have. It was uh, uh, an abysmal second quarter when the Lions got outscored 14-6, to but since then, and they have outscored the Leopards by 11 here in the third quarter and have a very comfortable eight-point lead with possession with 45 seconds to go. Well, Vernon in a half-court press now. And Sloker dribbles with the basketball, gets low, and Murphy picks up a foul. And you can hear the expression of Coach D. Gregorio on the fouls that Bell Vernon is taking, and that's the sixth foul already on Bell Vernon, so South Bay with a chance to be in the bonus before the fourth quarter. It's Black inbounds near sideline. Nisselin has the basketball, guarded by Hartman. Nisselin dribbles across the timeline, pulls up, 25 seconds left, hands it off to Loker on the left wing. Loker pulls back, guarded by Thomas. Thomas has three fouls. Boy, right corner, motions around the arc, guarded by LeCart, LeCart pressures, gets pass, and now LeCart picks up a foul. Mm, that was a little bit on the ticky-tack side. I'd like to see that one get, that whistle get swallowed a little bit. I don't know there was that much contact there, but it's going to mean a one and one. It's the bad news for the Belvern and Leopards. The good news is they will get one more possession here before the end of the third quarter. 10.4 seconds left, 40 to 32 the score, or as Hoy heads to the charity stripe for the first time tonight with four points. Hoy's first free throw, off the back iron, off front rim, no good. Rebound by Belvern, pushing ahead. LeCart driving. Right baseline, dishes it off. Three-pointer from the left wing, off back iron, no good. Sadelak couldn't grab the rebound, and that ends the third That's quarter of play from South Fayette High South School. Fayette South Fayette Bell outscores Bell Vernon 18 to seven in the third quarter and takes an eight-point lead into the fourth. You're watching 2017 WPIAL basketball, and it's here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. People ask what drives me. It's the respect I have for my opponents, the trust I have in my teammates, a coach who treats me with dignity, and a university that has faith in me on and off the field. That's what keeps me focused, why I practice harder, play my heart out. I play to win. I play for Carlo. Tell us your story using hashtag what drives you. Carlo University is a proud sponsor of the Trib Live High School Sports Network. We head to the fourth and final quarter of play from South Fayette High School with the Lions leading the Leopards 40 to 32 after an impressive stellar third quarter by the South Fayette. Yeah, a couple of mini runs for the South Fayette Lions. They started out with a 6 0 run to start the third quarter, and then after a three point play by Bell Vernon, they rattled off seven unanswered points. So they were able to really turn the tide in the third quarter and turn it quickly. I mean, really, halfway through the third quarter, they had extended their lead to, you know, really uh, kind of their biggest margin, and that's kind of where we stand right now, 40 to 32. Biggest margin of the game for the South Fayette Lions. South Fayette starts with the basketball with an eight-point lead. Inbound goes to Mislin. Guarded tightly by LeCart. Thomas joins, throws it to Black, who gets back. 
just in time before the back and forth, and then a Euro step to the oh, right hand. The and Plack gets the basket. He's got 10 on the night. And it's 42-32, South Fayette. Thomas drives, and a foul is going to get, be called on Mislin. It'll be Mislin's first foul of the night, just the third team uh, foul on South team. Fayette. Oh, With 7.40 left in the fourth quarter. I mentioned, Sean, that the 40-32 margin was the biggest uh, lead of the game for South Fayette. That's incorrect. It, used, it was 40-30, to 30, so they had a 10-point lead late in the third quarter. LeCart driving, kick out, Frogner right corner, three. Frogner off the side of the rim, no good, rebounded by Savalak. Goes in strong, and we got a block on Platt. Sablak went in strong, and Plack had the feet set, but an offensive foul is called on Plack, his third. Plack unhappy with that personal foul call, and he had to be told to back away from the referee. He didn't want to take a technical foul, and that would give him another personal. Progner dribbles off, hands it to Hartman. Hartman driving towards the right side. Goes in, stops inside the paint. Frogner from the left corner for three. Off front rim, no good. Rebounded by Loker. Still a 10-point South Fayette lead with seven minutes left. Loker dribbles ahead, pulls up, kicks it to Hoy on the left side and resets with Misselin at the top of the key. Loker on the left wing. Drives left baseline. Goes up and he's swatted from behind by Savalak. Hartman. Dribble drive. Pull back. Double teamed in the corner, and we have a stoppage. And I believe a timeout was called by Hartman as he got double teamed on the far sideline. And a 30-second timeout is called with 6.46 left fourth quarter, the score 42-32. Yeah, you know, you never want to get uh, into a situation where you get uh, kind of double teamed on a sideline, but when you do, it's good to have the smarts to know when you're in trouble and call that timeout to save a possession. When you're down 10 with 6.46 to go, you cannot give up possession. So even though you didn't want to take a timeout there, ideally, smart by the senior to take the timeout to maintain possession of the basketball. So Bell Vernon will inbound on the far sideline, trailing by 10. Frogner will inbound. Belverna needs to look to chip back into this one. It's Hartman. Hartman pulls up top of the key, double team. Gets it off to Thomas. Inside, Sadalak. Left hand, gun in the end one. Yeah. Sadalak. And who is this foul on? Is it on Hoy or is it on uh, Plack? It's on Hoy. Yeah, both were down there. I thought it was on Hoy, but. Black was right in the vicinity as well. It would have been the fourth personal foul if he was whistled. Sabalak has six, looking for seven, and it's good. Lead is also cut to seven, 42-35. Hoy dribbles towards the far corner. Hands it off to Mislin, back to Plack. Loker, top of the key. Hoy makes a shot from the left wing. It's at the Mislin inside to Plack, looking to go up strong, loses possession. Hoy now in the left corner for three. Hoy hits his first three of the night. He's got seven, and it's 45-35 yet again. Frogner drives, layup, no good, rebounded, and Hoy pushes ahead for the Lions. Gets past LeCart, goes up, right hand, misses. Rebound inside by Franklin, drops it to Hoy. Loker on the left wing, pushes up, kicks out. Mislin to the... Right corner for three in and out by Franklin, rebounded by Frogner, and we're going to have a foul from behind, and this might be on Hoy. Well, that would have been the dagger right there if Drew Franklin was going to be able to knock that down. Nice job by Hoy to make the extra pass and give Franklin the open look from beyond the arc. He just couldn't get it to go. Bell Vernon inbounding from the far sideline. In the backcourt, McCart dribbling ahead. Hands it off Washington, who's re-entered for the first time since the third quarter with four fouls. McCart inside, Thomas. Thomas dribbles around, pushes off. 
Kicks out, left wing. LeCart drives, pull up, floater from 12, and it's good. Basket foul, LeCart has eight. And the first points for Bell Vernon in the fourth quarter. Motioning around the arc is Franklin. Lobs one inside, stolen away by Thomas. Nusser running the offense. Moving things around, drives right side, stops at the right block to LeCart, drives right baseline. Behind the back, kicks, Nusser. Wanted the deep three from the right wing, instead goes with a floater, that one no good, rebounded by Sabalak. Sabalak, right block, lays it in, Sabalak has nine. I love the aggressiveness by Sabalak there, he could have just kicked it back out after the offensive rebound, he went right to the hoop. Black has it at the top of the key. Motioning around the arc. Back inside to Black on the right block. Franklin top of the key. Holt stops his dribble at the right wing. Gives it back to Missling with 420 left fourth quarter. The score 45-39. South Fayette leading. Boy on the right wing to Black. Black. Ness. Loker inside, nearly losing it, going back to Franklin. Loker drives, stops at the foul line, stripped of the basketball, drops on the ground, gives it to Franklin, left corner, three, hit it! And a timeout called by South Fayette as Drew Franklin picks up point number 12. And the Lions take a nine point lead with 3.54 left in the fourth quarter. Well, that was the big three. We talked about the three when they were up 10 that he just barely missed that went in and out. Drew Franklin's got a nice touch from beyond the arc. He's got three three-pointers on the night. And as you mentioned, game high 12 points. A big three because Bell Vernon had scored the last four to cut their 10 point deficit down to six. Now with that three-pointer, South Fayette extends their lead back up to nine with just under four minutes to play. And Bell Vernon reeling now a little bit. Got within six, as you mentioned, now back down nine. But the one key, though, for Bell Vernon, three starters, three fouls or more. Washington has the four, and he's back on the floor right now, and Washington has to play a little more... Uh, Laid back basketball as compared to what he could with maybe two or three fouls. Now we get ready for the inbounds. As Bell Vernon looks to cut back into this lead. Two timeouts left for Bell Vernon. As McCart inbounds to Rathway. A 5'9 senior guard. Brings the ball ahead, crosses the timeline with 3.48 left in regulation. Rathway drives, right wing, handoff to Thomas. Thomas back to LeCart. Kicks back behind on the right wing. Dishes off, Rathway, right corner three, off the back iron, no good. Rebounded by Mislin, but smacked away by LeCart. Sabalak goes up strong, but he's contacted and fouled. And Sabalak will head to the stripe. Sabalak has nine on the night, leading all scores for Bell Vernon. It's going to go against Tim Loker, his third personal foul. Oh, number 11. First of the second Tim half. But Sabalek has done a great job Here's on that low block seven. for this Leopards team. First free throw is good. Ten so points seven. now for Sabalek. 6'4 senior. Three and a half minutes remaining in the fourth. Bell Vernon looking to cut back into this one. Sabalek's second free throw. In and out, rebounded by yeah, Flack. Loker's going to bring the ball across, driving quickly ahead, right hand layup is good by Loker. Nine yeah. points Loker. for Loker, and it's 50 to 40, back to a 10 point edge. With 3.15 left, Rathway drives. Right lane, dishes it off to Washington on the block, no good, rebounded by Sabalak on the left side. Thomas drives, stops at the foul line. Looking to go to the right corner and out of bounds. Turnover, Bell Vernon, Frogner to check in and South Fayette to take over. With 3.03 left in the fourth, the score 50 to 40. Black 
Throws it off the legs of Thomas and back out of bounds and taking over. Again, in maintaining possession is South Fayette. Being guarded tightly by the press and now Mislin breaks the press. Guarded by Washington, Mislin goes up strong, misses the layup, followed by Hoy, he misses. Followed by Franklin, he gets contacted and fouled. It has a chance for a three-point play. Play a little put back, why don't you, if you're South Fayette. Yeah, really good offensive rebounding for the South Fayette Lions, extending the possession and ultimately getting the deuce and giving Franklin a chance to get the three-point play. Tips are wild tonight, as that was just a game of tips by South Fayette. Ultimately ending with Franklin, and he got the lucky draw, the foul at the end. 52-40, a chance for a three-point play, and he hits. Game high 15 for Franklin. It's 53-42, 55 left in regulation. LeCart drives, kicks Washington. Back to the top to half, Rathway. Rathway drives, dishes inside, stolen, intended for Sadillac. Misselin has it, guarded tightly by Rathway. Gives it to Beck. Beck to top, Franklin, back to Beck. Beck, double dribble or travel. It's going to be called, and it's going to be a travel on Beck, and Bell Vernon forces a turnover with 2.35 left in the fourth, trailing by 13. Well, our biggest lead of the night for the South Fayette Lions, and the Bell Vernon Leopards need to score the ball and score quickly. Rathway to Washington on the right wing. Back to LeCart. LeCart double team. Rathway in the right corner, drives, pulls up on the right elbow. Going back to Washington, drives, kicks, right lane, back to LeCart. LeCart guarded tightly by Mislin, and a foul is going to get called on Mislin. It's Mislin's second foul of the night. Well, the Leopards don't have the time to run a full set offense right now. Down 13 points with 2.17 to go. They're going to need to kind of ratchet up what they're doing offensively, make less passes and really look to attack the hoop earlier on in possessions. McCart in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And McCart tonight, one for one, for two for two from the charity strike. He has eight points. First free throw is off, back iron, no good. Oker gets the board. Mislin running the offense slowly. Pulling back, gets it to Loker. Loker crosses the timeline to break the 10 seconds. Inside Plack, lay up, off back iron and in. Plack picks up his 12th point of the night. It's 55-40. Alfayette leads Bell Vernon. Rathway kicked to Washington, back. LeCart, right wing three, back up of the glass, no good. Contact between Washington and Mislin, and we'll wait the call. I think they're gonna call Washington on this, and they are, and that's number five for number Washington. Washington. So Washington good. fouls out with 1.46 left in the fourth quarter. Bell Vernon trailing 55-40. Frogner will check in for Washington, who comes out of the game with just two points and five fouls on the night. And Mislin will head to the stripe with three points tonight. First free throw attempts. First one's good. Four points for Mislin. 56 40 to the score. Second free throw. Off back iron, no good. Rebounded by Frogner. Rogner gives it to Thomas. Thomas behind the back, goes for the left-hand layup, and he connects. Thomas with seven. It's 56-42, 1.30 left, fourth quarter. Mislim moving the ball slowly ahead, gets it to Hoy. Hoy connected with, but keeps the dribble, crosses the timeline, get, retains the dribble, back around. Loker on the left corner, drives left baseline, hishes it off. And laying it in is Noah Black, who now has 14 tonight. And a timeout is called with 1.16 left in the fourth quarter. And the score is 58-42. South Fayette has opened this one up. Boy, it has been all South Fayette Lions here in the second half. I don't know 
what Dave Mislin said to his team, but they have come out guns of guns of blazing in the last 16 minutes of play. We're down three points at the half, now have extended their lead to 16 here as they have outscored the Leopards by 19 in the, in the second half. This results to hold up, and it's almost hitting inevitable at this point. South Fayette and Bell Vernon will now be tied for the Class 4A Section 3 lead at 5 and 2 overall. Both teams would have beaten each other on each other's home courts for the second season in a row. Bell Vernon would drop to 9 and 4 with South Fayette moving to 8 and 5 overall. As Bell Vernon to inbound, we'll take a look at what's coming as Bell Vernon. Plays again tomorrow against Vanessa at Vanessa with a 2.30 tip. As Rathway has the ball, top of the key, drives right lane, looks under, dishes to Hartman on the left corner, back to the top of the key, LeCart. LeCart drives right lane, goes with a layup. That one's blocked and Rebound. rebounded Ooh, by Saxton. Under a minute left, fourth quarter. Ball nearly intercepted by Hartman, and that one goes out of bounds. Okay, and South Fayette will hold possession. South Fayette won't take the floor until Tuesday next week in another conference game, but travels to Elizabeth Forward to face the Warriors. Hooker to inbound on the near sideline in front of the scorer's table. Saxton with it now, goes to Plack. Plack drives, pulls back, and Beck has it. All five seniors on the floor for South Fayette on senior night. With a 58-42 lead, Loker, floater, lays it in. Loker has 11, three Lions and double figures tonight. It's 60 to 42. Rathway drives and he is going to draw a foul with 27 and a half seconds left in the fourth quarter. And Rathway will head to the charity stripe. Foul goes on Austin Smith, his third. And Rathway with four points has a chance to pick up two more tonight. And South Fayette's going to bring in some mass substitutions here. Coming up. First free throw is no good. So a round of applause for our seniors from South Fayette. And it's mass substitutions for South Fayette as Thomas, Elia, Lutz, Fleming, and Alcorn all check in. Second free throw goes in. Five Good points for Athway, 60-43. It's Thomas to inbound. Thomas. Alcorn gets the ball stolen away. Rathway loses Thomas. it. And Thomas brings it ahead and drops it off. Lutz Nolan. back ahead. Now an opportunity back underneath the basket. Elia gets blocked from behind. And Thomas has the basketball, 10 seconds left, fourth quarter. Behind the back, LeCart drives to the hoop and goes with a reverse layup, 60-45. LeCart with 10 points, and South Fayette pushes it ahead. Thomas loses the basketball, it goes out of bounds anyways. And South Fayette avenges a loss in December at Bell Vernon, 35-33, with an impressive 60-45 victory over the Leopards to create a tie for first place in Class 4A, Section 3. We'll send it to break when we come back. We'll try to get a hold of head coach Dan Mislin, and we'll go over some stats for you. You are watching 2017 WPIAL basketball here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Inside the WPIAL Wrestling Circle every Monday at 7 o'clock on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Each week, we'll take a look at the latest happenings on the mat from around the WPIAL, talk with coaches, and get you set for what's to come as the season rolls on. Come out and see us every Monday as the show we broadcast live from 40 Bar and Grill just west of Washington on Route 40. Inside the WPIAL Wrestling Circle every Monday night at 7 o'clock only here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Check out the new and improved Trib Live High School Sports Network website every day. Log on to tribhssn.triblive.com for all the schedules, the scores, the standings, great articles, and features from around the WPIAL. And, of course, live and archived broadcasts. 
If you are a high school sports fan, the only website you will need is the new Trib Live High School Sports Network at tribhssn.triblive.com. For a weekly in-depth look at boys and girls high school basketball in the district, log on to the WPIAL Roundball Report every Wednesday at 6 p.m. here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Join experts Chris Harlan, Sean Myers, and James Dotson for coaches' interviews and the latest hoops news around the WPIAL. Oh, and um, Don Rebel is back on the show as well. That's the WPIAL Roundball Report, Wednesday at 6 p.m. here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Back at South Fayette High School, we're going to be joined momentarily by Coach Mislin of South Fayette after a fantastic 60-45 to 45 win tonight. And, I mean, what can you say about South Fayette outscoring? He managed that really well in the second quarter, even though... They did not play well without uh, them, with them on the bench for most of the second quarter. At least he preserved their foul trouble, and really they were able to, I think, play a lot more unfettered in the second half. So uh, great adjustments at halftime for the South Fayette Lions. They really came out and dominated the Belle Vernon Leopards on their home court here in the second half. And if you're South Fayette, you have to be uh, happy about what happened. I mean, starting all five seniors tonight on senior night, and what comes off the bench, your normal starters, but tonight the number's a little flip-flopped as your bench scores 35 points, a lot different than what the uh, bench is opposed to doing for the Lions. Yeah, South Fayette didn't get a lot from Connor Mislin tonight. Uh, he didn't get the start because it was senior night, and I think that might have taken him out of his rhythm a little bit. He did not have his best game. I thought Belverna did a good job defensively on him. I thought Griffin LeCart uh, played him really tough uh, from a defensive standpoint, but you know, they only got four points. They got 11 less on average from Connor Mislin than they normally do, and yet they were able to uh, withstand and, uh, and get the victory here tonight. Now it's time for the scoring recap, sponsored by UPMC Sports Medicine and the Stay Strong and Play On program uh, with the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Now let's quickly take a look at uh, the scoring for the South Fayette Lions. They were led by Drew Franklin, 15 points coming off the bench, three threes for him. Uh, Tim Loker with 11, Noah Plack 14, Braden Hoy with 7, Jean, uh, Benjamin Coyne with 7, and uh, Connor Mislin with 4, Austin Smith with 2, South Fayette with 16 points in the first quarter, 6 in the second quarter, 18 points in the third quarter, and 20 in the first, fourth quarter for their game total of 60 points. Bell Vernon was led by a couple of 10-point scorers. Griffin LeCart with 10, Joe Sabalek with 10 off the bench. Logan Frogner had eight, Derek Thomas had seven, Jake Rathaway with five, Cam Nusser with three, and Bryce Washington with two before he fouled out. Bell Vernon with 11 points in the first quarter, 14 in the second quarter, seven in the third, 13 in the fourth quarter for their to game total of 45 points. 13 turnovers committed by the Bell Vernon Leopards here tonight. It's a good defensive uh, work by the South Fayette Lions. And uh, South Fayette Lions win by the score of 60-45. That is your scoring recap sponsored by UPMC Sports Medicine's powering the Stay Strong and Play On program with the Trib Live High School Sports Network. And now it's time for our post-game interview sponsored by Carlo University, proud sponsor of all girls high school sports here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Steve, I'll let you take it away with Coach Mislin. Yeah, we welcome in Dave Mislin in the, uh, the post-game show. Coach, uh, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, it seems like anytime you and Bell Vernon get together, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fist fight. You know, it's going to be a couple of uh, teams uh, going blow to blow with each other. Uh, you guys got off to a good start. Things kind of turned around in the second quarter because you were dealing with some foul trouble. But you guys came out and really played well in the in the third and fourth quarters. What was the message to your team at the half? Stay the course. Uh, we feel like we can guard them. They they feel like they can guard us. We were going to switch things up a little bit and, and throw a little bit of a press at them after makes because they haven't seen it from us. They're just used to straight man-to-man. -man. 
But to be honest, what it comes down to in games like this is the toughness and a couple made shots and the momentum turning. And you could feel it turn right at the beginning of the second half. And it kind of stayed that way the whole time. And, I, you know, our seniors stepped up really big, you know, and so did Drew Franklin. He, he had a huge night. We'll talk about uh, this being senior night. We'll talk about your seniors uh, in just a second and, and what they've meant to the program and, and to you over the four years. Um, talk about that second quarter. It was not a good uh, a good quarter for you guys. Uh, you had a 16-10 lead in the fir uh, first quarter, but then um, Noah Plack and Tim Loker got into some foul trouble. I, we noted it in the broadcast. I mentioned it to Sean. I thought you did a great job as a coach managing that, making sure that, um, you know, even though it was a disjointed quarter because, you know, Plack and, and Loker weren't in the game for a lot of it, you, at least you managed it to the point where they could come out in the second half and be a little bit more unfettered uh, because they didn't have to worry about playing with three. You said it perfectly. And, 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 and I'll tell you another thing. There's so much emotion on a night like tonight. Even with our, our underclassmen, they really like these seniors. Mm -hmm. it, you know, this is one of the more cohesive groups I've ever coached, and I've coached a long, I'm pretty old. But anyway, <laughs> but what you said about the second corner is we were so, we had no flow, we had no consistency. And then, and then we have some, you throw some foul trouble on top of that, and then I thought, I thought uh, Connor got tired, I thought Brayden Hoy was tired, I thought, I thought we needed to sub more, and now we had foul trouble. So we were totally out of flow and out of, out of any kind of rhythm to, to offensively. Defensively, we kind of held them uh, to keep it close enough to only be down three at the half. So that was, uh, I, we were, believe me, at halftime we were we were ecstatic that it was only three. Yeah, talk about your defense. Uh, you guys uh, forced Bell Vernon into 13 turnovers. We saw you guys, uh, you know, throw a couple of different defenses at them. You talked about a uh, little bit more of the full court press in the second half. Uh, I assume that that's probably something that you stress uh, really strongly with your team. Well. Again, I coached at Brentwood before this, uh, and I'm coaching here, and we have a lot of multi-sport athletes that don't, they don't spend their off-season in the gym working on their skills all the time. Right. So the bottom line is I've always made the, the commitment that we are going to guard people and we're going to give really good help and we're going to try to be the best defensive and rotation team that we can be. And if you look at the numbers, I mean, I think we're giving up 50 a game right now for the year. Mm -hmm. and. I think we've played a pretty tough schedule. We've yeah. played St. Clair, we've played Peters, we've played West Allegan, we've played up, and I, and, I, and I think our numbers speak for themselves defensively. Now, offensively, we got a lot of, <laughs> we are one big question mark. Uh, you guys got it done tonight with um, Connor Mislin, um, uh, you know, not having the night offensively that he's used to having. I thought uh, Griffin LeCart and, and a couple of Leopards did a really good job. And, and certainly he's not used to coming off the bench. And I think that kind of, you know, he was maybe a little out of sorts there. But you got great uh, production from Drew Franklin when he got back into the basketball game. Tim Loker stepped up. Certainly Noah Plack uh, came through. I think that's one of the benefits that you have on your team. I mean, look at you guys, really good production from Benjamin Coyne off the bench. Uh, Braden Hoy gave you seven. Obviously, he's, one of, he's normally a starter. But um, you have a lot of places to go on offense to get points when, when somebody's maybe not having a, a great offensive and, night. And you're exactly right. And, and, and what we always talk about is we want to be our best in the second part of the season. And, you know, I, I know you, you guys follow everybody, but you can't follow just us. But right. early in the season, if Connor wasn't scoring 15 or 16, we weren't scoring over 35, 40. Right. You know, and now, you know, and it, it, again, it's something you have to work on in practice and they have to trust each other and everything like that. But we got guys that can play. They just, you know, we're young. And same with Connor. I mean, he, he's starting to get beat up by some, they, they have some strong guys and, and they, you know, Kyle knows Connor from summer and from everything. So sure. he's not going to just let him run free. Right. Uh, like he was able to do some games earlier in the year. So other guys have to step up. And I'll tell you what, Drew Franklin's grown up by the day i mean and the kid the kid might be our best defender he's he's scoring he's he's a he's an athlete and he's a good basketball player and he does spend time in the gym and Braden hoy's coming along and and, and i think i think our best ball is going to be you know ahead of us i agree uh senior night always uh, probably emotional you talked about the excitement uh of of your team wanting to come out and, and play hard for these seniors uh, certainly we know of, of, on the basketball court, we know of Noah Plack. Tim Loker has been a, a really good contributor. But, you know, good contributions along the way from other guys. Drew Saxton, Johnny Beck, probably known a little bit more for their football, just like Noah Plack. Austin Smith, another guy.
guy. Talk about what these guys have meant to your program. I'm, I'm glad you're, you're giving me time to do that, uh, and I'll be as quick as I can. No, but I, take your time. I, I, I honestly get goosebumps talking about these guys, yeah. and here's why. Austin Smith is a kid. When I met him, I, this is only my second year, he'll never play for you. He'll never play. He's in the gym all the time. He works. Never opens his mouth. It's as nice a kid as you'll ever find in, in, in the world. Um, and just does anything. He'll run through a wall if you tell him. No, Plaque, well, he's a football guy. He's not. He's as competitive <laughs> yeah. on, the, on the basketball court yeah. as he is, and he comes into practice, and he's just as competitive. Tim Loker, Tim Loker, I, I call him our team nut. I mean, the kid goes crazy. He he will dive on the floor. He, he made that play down down there in the, ba in the in the paint where he dove and knocked it out to yeah, Franklin. That yeah. was a huge, huge play, play and we got a timeout three, after because yeah. we were exhausted. So, and and then and then the two I haven't mentioned, Drew Saxon and Johnny Beck. I'm telling you, guys, they were the stars when they were in seventh and eighth grade. I mean, they were re really good mm -hmm. basketball players. They haven't played in a couple years, mm -hmm. and and they said, Coach, well, you know, we'd like to come out for our senior year. At that makes a coach nervous. Yeah. You know, it's that, it's that, are they going to be entitled and expect to be on the court? They have been nothing. Not one second of a distraction. They don't play a ton, mm -hmm. but, but when they play, they make our practices competitive. I, to be honest, the, uh, the, uh, the first three I mentioned have been our captains this year. And last week, I, I made Drew and uh, Johnny captains. I said, I don't know how I couldn't. I said, they've been nothing but a positive influenced our younger kids role models they practice their butts off and if they get in they give you everything they have and if they don't they're happy as can be after the game i mean they've, they've been they've exceeded my expectations like you can't believe well your uh, team came up big on senior night uh, a huge 60 to 45 win over bell vernon leaps you to the top uh, you know tied now with bell vernon uh, south park might find themselves there if they beat uniontown tonight uh, what are you looking for the rest of the year consistency uh it's a defensive end because I keep saying if you play if you play great defense, you're gonna have a chance every night. Because I, I mean, there's so much parity in this league. Yep. You know, I mean, we go next week. We have three road games, yep. and I was just talking to them about it. I said, you know, there's an old saying: it's the challenge of the chase. It's mm -hmm. not always the thrill of the kill. I said, this is fun. I said, we're going to EF Tuesday. We're going to South Park Friday. South Park's beating Uniontown, Bell Vernon. Uh, who, oh, McGuffey, they, they've got three huge wins. Yep. I said, we're going to their place Friday, then we're going to McGuffey Saturday. I said, so it, it, it's fun. I just want to be consistent on defense, and we're going to keep working on offense to get, get guys open shots and, and uh, execute some plays. Dave, thanks so much. Hey, guys, for thanks for coming. Us. We really yeah, appreciate my it. My pleasure. Uh, big win for the South Fayette Lions, 60 to 45. We're happy that uh, Dave Mislin took some time. Good luck the rest of the way. All right, thanks, uh, Dave. And we bring Sean back into the broadcast. That. Um, uh, Post-game interview sponsored by Carlo University, proud sponsor of all girls high school sports here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Yeah, and we'll wrap it up quick here as the final score, 60-45, to 45, and I'll send it right back to you, Steve, your thoughts overall on that contest tonight. You know, I, I thought Dave uh, nailed it. He, uh, he talked about defense and, and the fact that that's kind of the baseline for this team. If they can... They can play good defense. Things, good things are going to happen. They played good defense. They forced 13 Bell Vernon turnovers, able to score on some of those turnovers. Uh, it wasn't a masterpiece offensively, but they got the job done. They played so much better in the second half than they did in that second quarter. But uh, a big win here tonight, and I agree with him. I think this is a team that's going to going to play very well down the stretch. It's nice having that senior leadership and guys like uh, Noah Plack and, and Tim Loker, Drew Saxton. Uh, Johnny Beck, these are really competitive kids that have been extremely successful on the football field. That can't do anything but help uh, your basketball team. So it's going to be fun to see both these teams. And, and trust me, Bell Vernon did not play well in the second half tonight. But they're going to be uh, a team to contend with uh, the rest of the way as well. South Fayette moves to 8-5 and five overall, 5-2 five and two in Class 4A, Section 3. We'll take the court again Tuesday night at Elizabeth Forward for a 7.30 tip. And for Bell Vernon, drops to 9-4 and four overall, 5-2 and two in Class 4A, Section 3, now tied with South Fayette and potentially South Park as well, pending tonight's result against Uniontown. Bell Vernon takes the floor tomorrow at Manesson High School for a 2.30 tip. One last time from South Fayette High School, the final score, South Fayette 60, Bell Vernon 45. For Steve Nagler, for Jess Levo on video, I'm Sean Saputo thanking you for joining us and watching tonight's broadcast of 2017 WPIAL basketball on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Have a fantastic evening, everybody.
You have been listening to WPIAL Basketball 2017-2018 here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and sponsored by UPMC Sports Medicine, by AstroTurf, by Carlo University, proud sponsor of the 2018 WPIAL Girls Basketball Playoffs, and by Trib Total Media. You can follow the 2017-2018 WPIL Boys and Girls Basketball season every day by logging on to TribHSSN.TribLive.com. The preceding has been a special presentation of the Trib Live High School Sports Network.